Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we have a very fun garden tour to take you on. Uh, just end of last week, we created a brand new flower bed because our sweet friends at Walters Gardens sent us a shipment of gorgeous plants. I mean, they were, are stunning plants. If you will remember way back late winter, um, early spring, we did a video of my top 15 favorite perennials for the South. And so our great friends at Walters were like, hey, you've got these wonderful plants for the South. Let us grow them out for you. And then we're gonna send them to you later on in the summer. You can display them at the garden center. And so your customers, our viewers can see these plants um, up close and impersonal, touch them and see what fantastic plants they are for the South. Because remember, we are in North Carolina, zone 7B. We are in the Piedmont of North Carolina, just west of Charlotte. So we have that typical, like, you know, Southern climate. It is hot, it is sticky. Our night temperatures do not really go down very low. And, and even still, it's very um, humid even at night. That can be quite a problem for plants because they don't get a chance to recover. They can't go into the air conditioned house and get a break. They have to stay outside, of course, all the time. So when they sent us these beautiful plants, I had the 15, um, my top 15 for both sun and shade. I will link that video, check out this link or go to the video description and it will be right there. So you can go back and get all of the plant details, um, all the specifics, all the growing zones, all the nitty gritty kind of things you need to know. So they sent us those 15, but they just didn't send us one of each plant. They sent us two, three, five, six of those plants, which is fantastic when you are landscaping. So Jerry pulled out the big guns uh, last week and we started the morning and this was totally grass. And by lunchtime, we had this gorgeous landscape bed already installed. Um, so it has been here for a couple of days. Of course, these plants came from Michigan because that is where Walters Gardens is. Um, and what you know, as soon as it came to North Carolina, I mean, it is hot and they have handled it really well. So we're gonna walk through and show you these plants. What I love about these 15 perennials is that we have blooms starting from the earliest time in the spring and go all the way through late fall. So you have got that gorgeous color and interest and pollinator attractors throughout the growing season. So if you are looking for some ideas on plants to put perennials to put in your garden that you need to handle um, not only our southern climate, obviously these will do really well in multiple um, climates as well, but with our heat and humidity, they can handle it. So what we're going to do is just kind of start to the left and then work our way to the right. You will notice right away, um, we have got the ultra, this is the Illuminary Ultraviolet Phlox fantastic flocks nice and big has that really like <laughs> they aptly named this plant ultraviolet because it is just it glows and it is um, just a performer it smells really good the pollinators love them um, I will say that we are out here relatively early in the morning so most of the pollinators are still uh, snug in their beds so they have not come out but I love this because it will get nice and tall and full, um, but it is taller than it is wide. And it does come in for us. It starts blooming like um, late June into early July. So that kind of gives you an idea of the time period on that. These are more resistant to powdery mildew. Powdery mildew is a big problem with flocks. What I would recommend, I mean, they're not completely powdery mildew proof, but they are more resistant. So to prevent your powdery mildew, you need to space them apart so they get good air circulation and they're more susceptible when they're under stress. So make sure they're getting water and that you give them fertilizer in the late winter, early spring. So ultraviolet, we have three here and then we have three on the other end to kind of bookend both of the beds because they sent us six of those sweet things. Next, we have the um, penstemon. This is, um, really is not should not be blooming now it's a little bit off because um they sent them to us this is more of an early like 
mid to late spring bloomer. Pentstemon is wonderful for attracting your pollinators with those beautiful um, little flowers. Those bees can get in there. They can get all that sweet nectar and it is wonderful. Um, the more sun it gets, it will take on those dark, dark hues. Um, so we've got a, a cluster of three of those. Then one of my favorite perennial, well, I, you know, I can't say that because these are my 15 favorites. So I would say that on every one, but Amsonia. If you are looking for a low maintenance, really high performer, um, this is String Theory Amsonia. Amsonia is um, a native plant to North America. It has this beautiful, really fine feathered um, foliage on it. And there are some um, Amsonia that have a wide leaf. This is that really nice skinny look. And Amsonia is gonna be one of your earliest spring bloomers because it does these beautiful star-shaped flowers that are a beautiful kind of a light blue. Then during the growing season, like the heat of the summer, you have this great foliage, which brings texture. It almost looks like a grass, right? Um, and then in the fall, it turns this golden yellow color. Massive impact fall interest in its foliage. Will be so, so pretty. Um, just a beautiful plant. Next door, we have on each end, they sent us some of the Nephophia. And this is solar flare. I'm gonna get them right. This is solar flare. Obviously, I need to come in here and do some deadheading, but solar flare is a beautiful bright yellow. And I'm really glad that they sent us this one because it brings, um, it kind of ties the whole bed in together with the with the daylily and the daisies. So it has this beautiful um, yellow. I mean, really vibrant yellow, nice and full. And for us in the winter time, it's a semi evergreen, so it will keep its foliage um, and it will keep its structure pollinators love this the honeybees love to go and stick their they go all the way up in the buds and all you see is their little honey sticking out it is quite fun then we have salvias salvias are another um, huge pollinator attractor especially early in the spring when they sent them to us they were in full bloom but with the heat, is, is they're starting to turn um, because these are spring bloomers, but you see how gorgeous the foliage is. This is pink perfusion, and pink perfusion clearly is a really nice, um, I would say on the darker side of a pink, it's not like a baby doll pink, just wonderful. Um, your salvias tend to be more deer resistant because they're kind of in that, like that minty family, so it has that, that smell to it that the deer and the rabbits tend to stay away from pollinator tractor so what we need to do is come in here and just give it a little shear just deadhead the whole plant not a severe prune but just come in and take those blooms off and if you do that you can get multiple flushes of blooms if you want to be specific you can come in and right where you have your two leaves that come together you can take your snips and cut it right there um, that will help thicken up the plant and then um, get you some new blooms. But you can see what just a beautiful shade of pink that is really, really nice. It's on the shorter side. That's why we stuck it in the front. So when you're planning your bed, you want your tall pieces in the back, tall, medium, short. Now this bed is interesting because people can walk all the way around this bed, but pre predominantly they're gonna come looking at it from the front on. Um, and if they come to the back, then they certainly understand how things are laid out. Now, more pink plants that are gonna be an early spring bloomer. So in the spring, we're gonna have our light blue Amsonia, our salvia that's a beautiful pink, our penstemon that's a light white and pink, and then here we have a Baptisia huge 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 fan of Baptisia because um, it is that early spring bloomer and then throughout the rest of the season you've got beautiful structure and leaf interest to it this is the decadence deluxe pink truffles and Baptisia you can see this was an old bloom stalk so Baptisia has very upright vertical blooms on it 
and the pink truffles is just a really fun shade of pink it's gonna be a little bit on the darker side so it's gonna complement everybody else really really nicely and as your Baptisia grows your mound gets wider but it's still gonna have that vase like habit so it's more narrow at the bottom and then as it goes up it kind of splays out um, so this is really fun we've got one on each end so we got two of those so those kind of bookend along with the Nefophia. Now, when I saw these um, Rainbow Rhythm Ruby Spider Day Lilies, I was like, dear heavens, these are full size plants. Walter's Gardens did not play around when they sent us these beautiful day lilies. This is Ruby Spider. It is one of my absolute favorites. I have it in the cottage garden. You can see it is just that really bold color. It stands out like this is my hand. So you can see just how massive these blooms are. These are not wimpy blooms. Rainbow Rhythm Series Daylilies are just stunning. Now, daylilies are called daylilies because this bloom will last for one day. But you see that we have got lots of other buds coming out. So you have a continuous weeks of blooms, but even though one day, one bloom only lasts a day. So it's this continuous bloomer for multiple weeks. And then at the rest of the season, you've got great foliage. Again, kind of that grass-like foliage. Um, so Rainbow Rhythm, Ruby Spider, I love all of them. Ruby Spider is definitely one of my favorites. Then here we have some Echinacea. This is the Summer Song Fire Finch. Um, and so what's really fun about this is that you're gonna have multiple colors on the same plant. So you're gonna have pinks, reds, and oranges, and everything kind of in between. So um, again, these are some of the older blooms, but you can see down here that this looks very kind of orange, where these have a pink hue to them. So you're gonna get that multiple color array on the same plant it is a shorter plant it is a on the smaller side so that is why we put it here in the front now i am not you may say well jenny you need to deadhead your echinacea because they're you know they're looking a little rough that is okay i'm going to leave them because the birds love to come and eat off of these flowers um, they're not going to produce seeds that produce other plants but especially the finches will come in late summer early fall that time period and they just will completely devour these seed heads so it's really fun so you can leave them on there i've got new um, buds that are coming and you're going to have nice new flowers really soon really love this now if you have been around me for two hot seconds you know how much i love the amazing daisies and this is daisy may all of them are wonderful um, daisy may is the classic white shasta daisy and i planted these relatively close to each other i think they're not quite even two of my feet apart so we can roughly say they're 18 inches apart next spring when these come out and they have their first bloom it's going to look like one massive plant one huge daisy may um, shasta daisy that is going to be covered in white blooms so really fun loves the sun with your shasta daisies they don't like to be consistently wet so they will rot if they're in a consistently damp moist area they like to be on the drier side obviously they do want water i mean they are a plant they need their water um, and they respond really well to being deadheaded. So if you can come in while they are in bloom, maybe once a week, like right here, here we have beautiful blooms, right? This one is an older bloom. So if I were to come in and snip that off, then that's gonna help extend the bloom cycle of the plant. And you're gonna hopefully get some more, um, another flush of blooms. So Daisy May, nice big pop of white. Then we have three of the summerific hibiscus and this is edge of night walters knows how excited i was last year when we trialed edge of night hibiscus because it is a gorgeous plant gorgeous it has that really dark foliage like um, if you're familiar with holy grail nice dark foliage but where holy grail is this gorgeous red edge of night is almost this iridescent hot pink 
massive blooms like all the other summerifics, but it is just this huge burst of color with those hot pink blooms against this nice deep dark foliage stunning plant so we have um, they sent us three of those so we spaced them kind of this one's in the center of the bed and then the other two are flanking and they will get some nice size on them i want to say they're in that i don't have the spe specs in front of me i want to say they're like that, that four and a half five foot range as far as the the width of them so just imagine height and wide covered in blooms it is going to be absolutely stunning Right now, we don't have buds on it, but because we have such a long growing season, um, I know that these will bloom this year. Typically, next year, once they've been in the ground for a, you know, a season or two, then they will um, be blooming right now. So our summerifics that are in the ground, this is, we're almost nearing the end of their bloom cycle. Um, so these are just, these, all these plants are just a little bit off because we just planted them um, from the nursery cans. And then you can see here in the center where we had the um, edge of night, on this side, we have got three of the Cheyenne Sky um, grasses. I love Cheyenne Sky. I planted this over in the backyard beds. Fantastic grass. But look how beautiful this is. I mean, just handling this heat and humidity like a champ. We've got three of them. We planted them relatively close together so that we would have a wall of grass. Cheyenne Sky is definitely taller than it is wide, but it has that beautiful, almost a blue-green um, color to the foliage, and it's already starting to put on a little bit of pinkish burgundy red on the um, actual leaves, and then it's starting to put up some of its plumes. So you've got that red pink burgundy look to cheyenne sky i mean i love it Th these grasses are hot weather grasses this is the time where they are just like woohoo! they are living their best life the ones at the house are doing great um, so if you're going to plant your hot weather grasses do it in the summer do it in the heat as opposed to late fall when it's cool because hot weather plant that's when they're most active. So you want to get them in the ground and get their roots established before the cold hits. So these fun three grasses, man, I am just, you know, I'm a, lo I'm a, I'm a lover of grasses. Then we have back to, we're kind of now back into repeating some of the same plants that we've already talked about. Another ruby spider, another Amsonia, another edge of night, another grouping of our ultraviolets right here one more actually, excuse me two more of the pink truffles and then the solar flare nephophia so on this side we have got two plants that we haven't talked about yet so we have the monarda bee bomb this is an old timey old-fashioned plant not new to the market but what is new and amazing and fantastic about these leading lady this is raspberry um, this is more of the, this is more of a kind of a premium bloom right here um, because it is that gorgeous raspberry color and they're short. If you're familiar with Bee Balm, um, Jacob's Klein is a classic one. It is an old timey classic, beautiful deep red, but it can get huge. And then as the season progresses, it gets really tall so it gets floppy and it falls over and then it just is really kind of messy in your garden so the leading lady is a more petite controlled upright very sturdy stems um, that you can put here in the front of your garden and I mean, just like the rest of the bee bombs, the pollinators go nuts over this. It is gonna be more deer resistant because again, it is in that kind of that minty family. Um, we have some of these over in Laura's bed that we trialed last year. And in one year's growth, the plant is at least double in size. It is not gonna be a spreader as far as like sending out rhizomes and none of these plants do that. That is what we love about Proven Winners. They take kind of those pesky traits of plants and they breed that out of them. So while your plant, your base gets bigger, you're not going to have a Monarda, you know, five feet away pop up. Really nice, beautiful plant. You can come in here and deadhead if you want to help encourage new blooms. We've got buds all over here, so it's just going to keep on going. Um, 
there's the pollinator buzzing around my head. So love the leading lady raspberries. And then down here for fall interest, even more fall interest is the um, Japanese anemone. And this is, let me make sure I get it all the way straight. This, yep, yeah, fall in love sweetly. Wonderful plant. It does provide that late summer, fall interest because it puts on these buds that it's putting on now and it is a double bloom of a flower a lovely pink um we're gonna snip that little thingy off right there so you can see that it is budding out i have some of these over near the bridge and they are starting to put on their flower buds as well traditionally japanese anemone can be very um I won't say invasive, but they can be uh, get a little too friendly with other plants and they will send out runners and it's really kind of everywhere. I'm fighting that over in the forest pansy bed. Sweetly is much more well behaved. Yes, your mound is gonna spread and you're gonna get little plants out on the side, but you're not gonna have runners that pop up in the middle of the Amsonia. Gorgeous double pink blooms late in the season, gives you that beautiful interest. Um, so really fun, planted those three really close together. So again, that they will look like one plant and they get their bloom stalks are nice and tall. So it'll be really fun. So this bed is uh, so exciting, really happy about this. Um, when we were talking, of course, you know, my mama, right? She was down here and we were talking and she said, Jenny, how much more are you gonna go out with your flower beds? So just to give you an idea of kind of like our overall plan is this, this will be the final um, flower bed that's here in the middle of the field. We want to keep this grassy area open so that way if we have gatherings, if we have events, there's somewhere that people can go and sit and congregate and have that beautiful area. But we're not going to stop putting in flower beds. No, we're not. Now what we're gonna focus on is cleaning up. So the creek runs right here, the whole length of the nursery. It just cuts the nursery in half. So we're working on cleaning up the creek bank, putting in flower beds that run the whole span of the creek bank. And then as we go around, we have this beautiful woodland area um, that will totally lend itself to woodland gardens, shade gardens, fantastic, and then the pond. Ever since we put this pond in eons ago, I mean, gosh, Jackson's 12, like 12, 13 years ago, we put this pond in because it's um, fed by a natural spring. And so that was our way of controlling where the water went. We created a pond and I want to develop around those that pond so much. Beautiful gardens. Um, right now, it's just kind of a bit of a woolly mess. We'll take care of it. Um, but we're gonna have gardens all through on the perimeter of this area. And in fact, what we're gonna do, our first one is over here because Walter's not only sent us beautiful sun-loving perennials, they also sent us a gorgeous array of shade-loving um, perennials as well. So if you will remember when we made these two new beds this year, um, Jerry came in with the bobcat and took off the top layer of the soil to get all the grass out. So we took out the top, I don't know what, maybe three inches of topsoil, which is good stuff. And that three inches is being generous. It's probably less than that. So what he did was he took that fantastic topsoil that had the grass in it and he dumped it right here. So he naturally built this bed up because we knew that we we're going to develop this as a shade garden. Now we're going to have to come in here and edge it and do all this other stuff. Hopefully today that is on our to-do list. Later on today is to really form this bed. We'll of course have to make sure the grass is all killed. But just to know that even though we took topsoil from there, we brought it to here so we are recycling the soil and we're going to develop this into a shade garden. So those beautiful hostas that they sent me, they sent me three different hostas um, and then some spot on pulmonaria. And I'll just go let you ahead and know a little secret. There's going to be a new pulmonaria coming out next year. I have five of those plants. So I'm going to grow them out a little bit and then I will put them in here. That way you can look literally side by side and say this is spot on and this is the new one. 
what is the difference, which one would I prefer in my garden, or I'm going to have both and I'm going to put one here and one there. So that is the whole idea of these gardens here at Creekside is that our customers, our visitors can come here, walk through self-guided tours, and you can really see up close and personal what these plants are doing, how they are growing, how they are thriving, maybe not how well they're not really thriving because a lot of these are like our test gardens, our trial gardens. Um, and so that way we know exactly what works here and what we can recommend and carry for our customers. So if you're here and you come to the nursery, come on over. It's just right here on the other side of this shrub lot come walk through we try to have everybody with a name tag so that you can look at them and know what they are feel free to take as many pictures as you like uh, but this is such a fun exciting development and we are so incredibly grateful um, to kata and all of our sweet friends at walters gardens the growers everybody who took such great care of these plants um, they just arrived in immaculate condition i mean it was like they just were picked up from michigan and set down in north carolina um, so a huge massive thank you thank you thank you to those sweet friends um, we will keep you updated as the season progresses on these areas is, and we are just know that we are going to do a full garden tour of the trial beds um, here in the coming days so as always thank you so much for gardening with Creekside y'all have a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next video bye friends